You're listening to the Results Driven Organizations Podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, a podcast of curated conversations with C-suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development. Get ready for inspiring interviews, educational lessons, and thought-provoking discussions that will challenge you to execute something new and innovative that will drive results in your organization. And now, here's Dr. Tanya Lowe. Hello. You're listening to the Results Driven Organizations Podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, using my results driven philosophy of strategy, leadership, teams, and customer experiences. I help organizations develop their best kept secret, their human capital. This podcast is designed to expand the conversation with C suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development and what it really takes to create, develop, and maintain results-driven and high-performing organizations. Today's episode is sponsored by EEVA Online Virtual Assistance. Overwhelmed by emails, scheduling, and admin tasks, EEVA's virtual assistants can help you get more time in your day, reclaim your day, and focus on what matters. Let's do more with EEVA Online Virtual Assistance. Visit eeva.com forward slash let's do more. RDO, welcome back. Welcome back to part two of Are You the Squeaky Wheel? Today's episode is a spinoff of Are You the Squeaky Wheel? In this episode, I want to talk to you about tackling a, a critical issue in the workplace. It's communication. And I'll be providing some practical exercises in this episode, Um, quite a few, more than I uh, thought, but go ahead, get a pad and a pen, and if you need to stop and take notes, that's the beauty of a podcast, right? Did you know that according to a study by Salesforce, 86% of employees and executives cite lack of collaboration, or ineffective communication for workplace failures. Now think about that. We're in a time of, you know, get more done with less and we're thinking about our productivity. There's not a time that I go into an organization where productivity and time management doesn't come up. But when we think about 86% of employees cite ineffective communication for workplace failures. That's something to be concerned about. There's also a report by Humble, P-U-M-B-L-E, and they found that poor communication cost companies of 100 employees an average of, get this, $420,000 per year. So when you have poor communication in your organization, we already know that's affecting your productivity, but it's also affecting your bottom line. That's money going out the door. These statistics underscore the importance of effective communication in the workplace. It's something that's never going away, even with the increase of more technology If you have humans in a company, you've got to focus on communication. The good news is uh, in a study by the Journal of Applied Psychology, they found that teams who received communication training and development, right, showed 19% increase in overall performance. Now, I added the development piece because oftentimes people will go into training And that's just it. I got the training. I got the certificate. I'm done. The development piece comes with accountability. Now that you've learned the knowledge, how are you going to use it? Who's going to hold you accountable? What's the ROI of you receiving this training? So today we're going to provide you with practical exercises for both leaders and team members to improve your communication and foster a more positive work environment. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this by no means means that you don't want to bring me into your organization. (laughs) 
this is an opportunity for you to get some skills um, to start like now, like while you're listening, if you're driving in the car and you're headed to work and you know, you know, as a leader, you struggle with communication. <laughs> You've heard it in your, your, your end of the year reviews. You've heard it from your staff members. You've heard it from everybody. 360, you've heard it, right? So if you're driving in your car and you know that this is you, just keep listening. You can try these things today. So before I dive in, I want to I wanna share some, some resources with you for those who will want to go deeper on this topic. And as always, they will be in the show notes page. When we talk about communication, there are a couple of resources that I always share with my clients. The first one is crucial conversations, tools for talking when stakes are high by Patterson, McMillan, and Switzler. Crucial conversations. You got to check that book out. Um, and when I'm learning a new skill, I'm at, I'm at the age now where I need the book and the audio because that, that kind of creates... Uh, a classroom effect for myself. So I can listen, I can highlight, I can make notes. Now you may not be able to multitask in that way. Your brain may not work in that way and it's okay. I'm just sharing with you what I do. The second re resource is the Harvard, Harvard Business Review article, The Science of Strong Business Writing by Bill Blanchard, Bill Burchard, Bill Burchard. So, uh, in a time where written communication is so key, people will write their communication before they have a verbal conversation with you. There's a science to writing so that people aren't offended, so that we monitor our tone in the writing, and so that we communicate uh, effectively the, point, the points that we're trying to, to make. And so the Harvard Business Review article, The Science of Strong Business Writing, is also something that I, I encourage greatly, especially if you have a multi-generational workforce and who doesn't today, right? And then the third, the third um, resource I want to mention is a, an online course by the University of Pennsylvania, and it's it's on Coursera. So if you've ever used Coursera or Udemy or any of those uh, LinkedIn Learning or any of it's one of those type of platforms. But this one is specifically on Coursera by the University of Pennsylvania, and it's it's called Improving Communication Skills. It's very thorough. Um, I highly recommend it. So those are three three uh, resources. I want to give you like right out the bat. They'll also be in the show notes page. Now let's get into our practical exercises. In 2023, I worked with a client on team building. They were not hearing, listening, or talking to each other. <laughs> These exercises, in addition to understanding their disc profile, helped them, and I hope they help you too. Now, keep in mind, they had the DISC profile to get a better understanding of how they show up. The DISC is not a, a personality inventory. It's more of a behavior uh, profile. Many times we want to focus on our personalities. So really, we need to look at our behavior and assess, is my behavior effective in this environment? what the disc does and, and what I really, really love about the disc is, and I guess maybe because I have a behavioral health background. <laughs> so what I love about the disc is that it causes you to, to become familiar with who you are, how you perform and how it may affect other people on the team. In addition to understanding their differences how they perform in the team, and how both of you like to work together. And so we had that at the backdrop of these exercises. So whether you're a seasoned leader or a team member looking to make a difference, these exercises can help you become more become a more effective communicator. <laughs> so let's jump in. 
So the first uh, exercise that I want to share with you, it's it's called, uh, it's a listening exercise. And it's, it's practicing the HEAR technique, H-E-A-R. It's an acronym. H stands for HALT, stop what you're doing, give full attention. E stands for engage, make eye contact, and show that you're listening. You can nod your head. You can make a couple of notes. A stands for anticipate. Look forward to what the speaker is is going to say. Be curious. Be curious. And then R is summarize what you've heard to understand, to ensure that you understand. And the R stands for replay. Halt, engage, anticipate, and replay. That's what? When you become an expert at communication, you can use this anywhere. You can use this when you're volunteering. You can use this at home with your family. (laughs) Because I know that there's someone at the house that's saying, you're not listening to me. So this is an active listening exercise. It's called HEAR. Practice the HEAR technique. Halt, engage, anticipate, and replay. Try this in your next meeting or one-on-one conversation. Number two is the feedback sandwich for leaders. And we used to do this when I I worked in mental health. You know, if we want to give uh, a client some feedback, we tell them something really good. We tell them something they needed to work on. And then we end um, with something positive. So when you're giving feedback that may not be uh, the positive, use the sandwich method. Some people call it the Oreo method. So start with a positive observation. You know, we really love how you have been leading the team. Your numbers have been great. And you want to address the area of improvement. Um, And you don't have to like really lay it on, you know, before you, you don't have to spend 30 minutes giving them positive observations. You can just have a couple of things about what you appreciate and what they do really well. And then you can move into the ad to move into addressing the area of improvement, what areas that they need to focus on to improve, improve. And so there may be areas around their time management, their productivity, how they engage with staff, their communication. And so I I, I also like to say when we give people um we we talk about the areas where they need to improve, let's try to give them some resources as well. Overwhelmed by emails, scheduling, and admin tasks? Eva's virtual assistants can help you get more time in your day. They manage calendars, handle customer service, and tackle projects 24-7. Reclaim your time and focus on what matters. Visit the show notes page to connect with Eva virtual assistants. Let's do more. Now back to the show. And then finally, you want to end with an encouraging statement or another positive point. Make sure you write these notes out so you're not searching for something to say, to say. And make sure you have something positive to say. I know that we have people in an organization sometimes that really you've got that one last nerve and they're standing on it with spiked um, shoes. Still find something to say. So here's an example. Your presentation was well-researched. I'd like to see more eye contact with the audience. Overall, your delivery is improving significantly. You see how we did that? That was simple to the point we we didn't belabor. We just kind of got to it. So number three, I statements for team members. When expressing concerns, use I statements to avoid sounding accusatory. Instead of, you never listen to my ideas, try I feel frustrated when I don't have the opportunity to share my ideas fully. Now that's going to, it's going to cause you to um, be a little vulnerable, but guess what? That's, that's probably what's needed. Vulnerability is not a bad word because what happens is you're already feeling vulnerable. Whenever we're not seen, heard, or valued, then those negative behaviors start showing up. So if we can start um, from the beginning and really express how we feel when certain things happen, that will open the door to better communication. Number four, question framing exercises. And this is for leaders. 
instead of asking, why didn't you complete the project? Try what's keeping you from preventing the project. Is there anything I can do to help? Do you need some other resources? But instead of, you know how, why haven't you gotten it done yet? <laughs> you don't want to lead with that, even though that's what you're saying in your head. What's what's preventing you from doing it? Because there's a reason that it's not getting done. And so we can deal with the obstacles, removing them so we can get the project done. For team members, instead of saying, this won't work, we've done this before, ask the question, how can we modify this to achieve our goals? What can we do to make this successful? Question framing. And so uh, reframing. And so I want you to practice I statements and reframing when you think about different meetings you've been in where the communication, if you if you had these tools, the conversation could have gone in a different different direction. Number five, empathy mapping. Okay, so listen, we're gonna create an empathy map for a colleague or a team member. And this is, this is how empathy mapping goes. We want to find out what are they thinking and feeling, not just thinking, but what are you thinking and feeling? What are you seeing and hearing in your role? What are your pain points and potential gains? Those are the questions. You want to know what are they thinking and feeling? What are they seeing and hearing? What are their pain points and potential gains? This can help both leaders and team members understand different perspectives. Going back to the I statement, I feel frustrated when I don't have the opportunity to share my ideas. So when you ask someone, what are you thinking and how are you feeling? I'm thinking that I'm not really valued here and it, it's really frustrating me. And so now you understand as a leader, here's something you can do. Wait a minute, that's not our intent, you know, and you can come up with a plan together. So it's called empathy mapping. I love it. I love it. I love it. Number six, nonverbal communication awareness. And I know somebody's probably thinking, wow, this is a lot. Guess what? You only have to pick one. Pick the one that you feel like you want to try. If you've got a team, I probably would start with empathy mapping just because not only will it, it's going to help you get a better understanding of who's on your team. It's probably going to bring the team closer when you ask, what are you thinking and feeling? Because they're going to have to really sit back and think about that. But I don't want you to think, wow, I've got to learn. I've got to do all of these. No, they're tools for you to put in your toolkit. All right. Number six, nonverbal communication awareness. For one day, just one day, I really want you to pay close attention to your nonverbal cues, your body posture, your facial expressions, your tone, your gestures. Reflect, because we can say a lot. We can say a lot with our face when we're not even saying anything. I, I have to fix my face all the time. And I know there's someone listening that probably needs to fix their face now. But pay close attention. If you've got to keep a small little compact mirror on your desk to really pay attention or have someone that you can say, watch my facial expressions, watch my nonverbal communication today and give me a report back. I want you to reflect on how these might be perceived by others and adjust them accordingly. I was working with someone, they were new. Uh, they just graduated from, from college, maybe about four years ago, it was pre-pandemic. And her her normal body language when people are talking to her was to just look at them. <laughs> and so she said, Dr. Tanya, I'm thinking. And I said, well, that's what you should say. Give me a moment. Let me process what you were you were saying. I, I I'm not muted. I'm not muted. I'm thinking, but people don't know that you're thinking if you're just looking at them. <laughs> and so we had a great laugh about it. 
And I, I told her, I, I kind of demonstrated what it looked like when she does it. And she's like, oh my God, is that what I look like? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You look like you're just looking at them like that they're crazy. Like you're looking at them, they're looking at you, you're looking at them and they're waiting on a response. They don't know you're thinking. So, and she said she'd done that her entire life. No one had ever said anything to her. I was like, well, welcome to grown up world now. It's time to learn some new skills. There's nothing wrong with taking a pause to process what was said or to think before you speak, but let people know that you're doing that. Okay. So uh, number seven, clear expectation setting. Oftentimes we don't set clear expectations and we don't get what we have in our brain back. We get gobbledygook back, right? Because we haven't set clear expectations. And so leaders use the SMART criteria to set clear expectations for a project, for an assignment. And we know, we know what SMART means. Specific, be specific, very specific. Not the specific in your head, but the specific if someone else picked it up, they would know what you were talking about. Measurable, achievable, relevant and time, time bound. <laughs> that is how you set clear expectations. And if you have to tape it to your desk to remember to do that. Why? Because we all, there, we have so many things in our head and we oftentimes think that people are in our heads too and they're not. And we don't communicate effectively. We say things like get the thing over there, put it up there and then lock it lock it up in the thingamajig. Like what? Like, you know what you are what you are trying to say. I have no clue. <laughs> so leaders use the SMART criteria. Team members, write down your understanding of your role and responsibilities. Then compare them with your manager's view to make sure that you're operating, you're, you both are operating on the same sheet of music. And that's how we minimize communication problems and issues. Number eight is the appreciation circle. In your next team meeting, have each person express genuine appreciation for another team member's recent contribution. Doesn't matter how big or how small. Do you know the number of people in an organization that feel unappreciated and unvalued? And so it's okay to say, you know, Jim, I really appreciate you helping me put the packets together. You didn't have to do that. It's not even in your department, blah, 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 yada, yada. I appreciate you. You know, Bob might not have even felt, thought anything about it. But when someone acknowledges something that we did, especially when it goes, when we may be going out of our way. It doesn't hurt to acknowledge it. Number nine, conflict resolution role play. I love this one. With a colleague, role play a difficult conversation. Colleague that you trust, especially if it's a real uh, conversation that you're going to have to have later. <laughs> but you can role play difficult conversations um, with your team members, because at some point in our career, we're going to have to have a difficult conversation. And I always say, if we keep, keep, keep the humanity of people and keep, um, understand, leave people with their dignity, it's easy to have these difficult conversations. So person A presents a concern, person B practices active listening and empathy and together you brainstorm solutions and then you switch roles and repeat. We love doing this in team building because what happens is regardless of whether someone will admit that they struggle with difficult conversations, I can almost guarantee you that 90% of your workforce struggles with difficult conversations. If you don't believe me, ask the people that live in their house. And then number 10 Communication style assessments. Take a communication style assessment like the DISC <laughs> or a, a, um, 
an assessment around emotional intelligence and discuss the results with your team. I'd love to come in and help you all do that. And we do that many times with companies because there are communication breakdowns. Like we said, 86% of organizations are struggling with that. I wonder what the percentage is in your organization. So remember, effective communication is a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. Whether you're the leader or a team member, it's all of our responsibility to contribute to positive communication. That is going to enhance the culture. It starts with you. It doesn't start with, well, when this person does it, then I'll do it. Because guess what? If you haven't practiced it, you won't have the skills. It's like, you know, well, when I get ready to build a house, then I'll buy a hammer. Well, you've got a house and all you have are screwdrivers. So you don't have time to go get a hammer. Learn the skill now. So this week, choose at least two of these exercises to implement. Pay attention to how they impact your interactions and the overall work environment. Remember, small, consistent efforts improve communication and they can lead to significant positive changes in the organization. Keep communicating, keep listening, keep driving results. View the show notes to grab the resources mentioned in this episode, our special gift to you for being a valued listener and to connect with EEVA Online Virtual Assistants, the sponsors of this episode. Let's do more. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Be sure to review the show notes for the resources mentioned and don't forget to grab your free gift available at freegiftfromtanya.com. Until next time.